Won't you stand now, please, for our congregation on him? Love lifted me. Amen. Yes, my sister Irene Gardner. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Scripture from your, for your hearing will come from the Holy Bible, Book of Psalm 103, King James Version. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And the last verse, bless the Lord all his works in all places of all his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. 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 sunshine and some people complain about it. Every day is a beautiful day because God sent it the day. I am here this morning to welcome our guests. This is on behalf of the George Board and the First Baptist Church of Deanwood family. Now, I don't think I see any guests in the audience, but have I missed someone? Is there someone here in the sanctuary? who is not a member, who is visiting. Okay. Now, I know that there are a number of people out there in what I call technology land who are visiting. And we say, fine, continue watching, continue listening, but come on in and see us too. We'd like to see who's out there watching what we're doing. Um, Thank you, too, for those of the members who have decided to come back. 
We keep yeah. telling you, First yeah. Baptist is a clean place. It is fine. <laughs> and we have an excellent record. I'll gladly talk to you about it, or Deacon B will talk to you about it. We have an excellent record. We don't have any problems. So, to all of you, welcome. Enjoy the meal that Paula, Reverend Dr. Paula Miller Lester has prepared for us this morning. And we're glad to see you. Amen. 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 Now we have special emphasis by Deaconess uh, Deborah Smith regarding uh, Women's Month. Amen. Amen. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I was facilitating Reverend Milton Holt on the prayer line Friday. After his sermon, he sung that song, Waymaker. But we all know that he is a waymaker to each and every one of us, a miracle worker. He is our promise keeper because he said so. Jesus, Jesus. Our announcements or emphasis for Women's Day. We come before you because next Sunday is Women's Day 2022. Our theme this year is women working together to make a difference in the lives of our children. Yes, our colors are still pink and white, and our scripture reading comes from Psalms 139, verse 14. We are asking all ladies to donate $60 and men to donate $50. But if you wish to go above and beyond, please feel free. Our activities are as follows. Tomorrow, Monday morning, exercise with Deaconess Tawana. Tally Cooper by Zoom. And we will get the Zoom information for you. And I'm sure you'll be able to call church clerk Tarina at nine, from nine to 10. Tuesday, October the 11th, prayer meeting at 7.30 p.m. The prayer meeting will be hosted by the prayer line and deaconess ministry. <coughs> and Sister Elnora Vax will take the lead. Wednesday, October the 12th, we will have Testimony Wednesday at 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. on the prayer line. We know everyone has a testimony because God has been so good to us. Thursday, you get a break. Friday, October the 14th, Reverend Paul Miller Lester will facilitate the prayer line at 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Also on Friday, exercise with Diggins to Wanna Tavern by Zoom again between the hours of 9 and 10. Then Saturday, October the 15th at noon, we will have comedy hour featuring Reverend Kenneth Cole and Sister Diane Green in the Francis Brent Dining Hall. We will also provide a slice of homemade cake and a bottle of juice or water. Please come out at noon on Saturday. We need your support. We have even invited our guest speaker there on Saturday. So we hope that you will come out and we pray that she will be there because she wants to meet and greet each and every one of you. For on Sunday the 16th, the guest speaker is Minister Sharon Honor from the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. 
So please come out and please support our activities that are planned for you. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Good morning again, First Baptist. Today is the 93rd. 93rd anniversary of our nurses' ministry. Will all the nurses please stand? All nurses all over. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Congratulations on this, another anniversary. 93. God bless you. God bless you. We look forward to the time where all of the nurses, Sister Doris, will be in white and march around. Amen. That time is coming again. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Starting today, this Sunday, the ushers will collect the tithes and offerings utilizing the long handle basket. After the, the offertorial appeal and prayer, a trustee will stand here in the front to receive the offerings from the ushers. In observance of Columbus, Columbus Day, uh, our church will be closed tomorrow. Homegoing service for Mrs. Rosa Kelly, mother of Sister Rhonda Hines, and mother-in-law of Trustee Gerald Hines, will be held Thursday, October the 13th at Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church, located at 4611 Sheriff Road, commencing with a viewing at 10 o'clock a.m. until the time of service at 11 o'clock a.m. We ask that you keep the family in your prayer. As part of the Women's Day activity, uh, as you already heard, just to be a little redundant, there will be a comedy hour held on Saturday, uh, October the 15th at 12 noon downstairs in the Francis Brent Dining Hall, uh, featuring the Reverend Kenneth Cole of the Temple of Praise and Sister Diane Green of our church. And as Sister uh, Deaconess uh, Deborah said, please come out for a little fun, a little laughter, uh, and time for everything under the sun, according to Ecclesiastes 3. Amen. Again, on Women's Day next Sunday, October 16th, during the 10.30 a.m. service, our guest preacher would be Minister Sharon Arnold, Associate Minister of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. In support of Women's Day, women are asked to give $60 and men $50. And you can mark on your envelope thus accordingly or in the uh, description box if you're utilizing online. Thank you. Part five, part five in this corner, pastor special church meeting will be held Monday, October the 17th at 7.15 p.m. via Zoom and conference call. Please contact the church office by Thursday, October the 13th to register. In preparation for this meeting, if you have any question for the pulpit committee regarding the job description, the vacancy, the announcement on the pastor's uh, qualification that was previously dis uh, distributed, please drop an email to the church secretary no later than Monday, Monday, October the 10th. Our 2023 annual election of vacant and volunteer officers, that uh, date is fast approaching. If you're interested in any of these positions, please contact and submit your name and telephone number to yours truly in writing with a copy to the church secretary, Sister Tarina Nelson, via email no later than November the 6th, 2022. Your gifts and talents are needed to carry on the business of this, your church. If you need a list of the available positions, please uh, check the bulletin board at the west and east door. Amen. All right, another opportunity to give of the Lord's times in this offering. Bless the Lord. Uh, Jesus said in John's Gospel, he said, if you love me, you do what I say. If you love me, you will follow my commandments. 
one of the commandments of Jesus is to bring the tithe in the offering into my storehouse so that there would be meat for my people. He said that. He said that. So we should be obedient to what he said. Is that all right? Amen. Shall we pray? Eternal God in heaven, we thank you for this another opportunity to give, to be obedient to you. You said to give. You've given so much to us, Lord. You give every day, every hour, every minute, every second, every moment of every single day. And Father God, out of our love and our respect for you, we're giving a portion of what you've given us back to you. Because that's what we're supposed to do, Lord God, in obedience of your command. So therefore, Lord God, thank you for the opportunity to exercise once again our ministry of giving in the precious name that's above every, every single name. That name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the greatest name in the history of earth. Jesus, Jesus, we pray. And God's people said, Amen, Amen. Ashes, Amen. Amen. As our musicians play softer. Thank you so much. Amen. Reserve Trustee Floyd Myers Sr. to come to us with the intercessory prayer. We ask that you pray for him, pray with him, pray for this church, pray for this city, and pray for this country. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. say let us go into the house of the Lord that phrase sings great meaning after all that we have been through through the trials and tribulations of the COVID-19 pandemic we can appreciate being in the house of the Lord for God is worthy to be praised before I start into the intercessory prayer. 
I would like for the pulpit committee to come forward and join me at this time. We've been charged with the task of seeking out an under shepherd for this house of God, for this great house of God, for this historical house of God. You all have given us that task and God has appointed us to do just that. So to Chairman Beatty and the Deacon Board, to uh, Chairperson Pat Joyner, for Trustee Board, Reverend Paula, for those uh, that don't know everyone by name, we would like to just introduce and present to you uh, Cynthia Thomas, Rhonda Pulliam, Angela Carroll, Sonia Sullivan, Catherine Fogel, and we'll be presenting on uh, October 17th the name of Deacon Delano Foster to join us in this task. But more importantly, we may have the easy part. You as the church body and the church membership have the hard part because we'll vet them and we'll go through their credentials and we're seeking God for his favor and his blessing as we enter every meeting and we'll bring them back before the church for the church as a membership to review them and see them so with that we ask that you will join us and stand with us in prayer that you will join us in this process and we will trust the process of God as God will lead us to receiving who he has already designed to be here. This is just the process. God knows who will stand behind this sacred desk, who will lead this church to the victorious position that we need to be in. Our souls look back and wonder sometimes how we got over. And we thank God for the leadership and the fellowship of those saints that have sat on the pillars of the church that have carried us for many years. I hate to start calling names, but Deacon Miller, Deacon Beatty, Minister Chance, Tanya Talley, Gerald Hines, and those of you all who have filled in the gap Reverend Paul, Minister of Music Kim Ross, we thank you for those people. So if you would join us today in a corporate prayer for the church at this time, shall we pray? Gracious and most kind Heavenly Father, we thank you for this sweet hour of prayer. Dear Lord, before we can ask you of anything, we must first say thank you for all the things that you have done for us. Dear Lord, we are wandering in the wilderness without a shepherd right now. So we ask that you will prepare the place for a shepherd to come in and lead this church. One that will be a visionary. One that will be able to engage in the membership and grow the church. Will spread the word up and down Sheriff Road throughout the northeast region. Yes. Let it pour over into the southeast region. Yes. Let it pour over into the northwest region. Let it extend this blessings and extend this message into the Maryland and the Virginians area. And then throughout the whole DMV, let people will flock to this church saying, what must I do to be saved? I'm here to hear the word that you will bless us with, with your under shepherd. Dear Lord, we know that you already have the person lined up for us. So dear Lord, I ask a special blessing to be upon the First Baptist Church of Deanwood at this time, that we, we will be in the posture to receive who you will have to come for. Let us learn how to love on one another. Let us pull together in goodness and your mercy. Forgetting those things from the past yes. and allowing us to press on to see what the tomorrow will bring. For only you, Lord, can reach into our past 
reaching to our yesterdays to make our today complete and only deliver the future for tomorrow. Yes, Lord. Only you can do that, Lord. Mm -hmm. So, dear Lord, we ask that your blessings will fall down upon us. Yes, let it rain down on us, your blessing. Even me, Lord, let it shower down on our heads like you poured the oil on Aaron's head and let it flow down his beard onto his garment. Let it flow in this church from the windows to the walls, from the pew to the pulpit. Let your blessings flow. Put us in a posture of love. Put us in a posture of receiving. Allow us to humble ourselves that we will be able to follow the shepherd that you will send this way. That it will get all of our hearts and minds in tune and in line in the right place. Dear Lord, forgive us of our past. Forgive us of our sins. Make us white as snow. Dear Lord, we ask that you will bless the sick that are among us. We ask that you will bless the bereaved that is among us. And bless those that are just troubled in heart and troubled in mind. Dear Lord, you know what everybody stands in need of. One stand in need of one thing and some in the need of others. Whatever their special needs are, we ask that you will bless them right now. But dear Lord, more than anything, we thank you for hope for tomorrow. We thank you for the new days that's going to come. And dear Lord, we are grateful to say that we will stand here in your goodness. And we thank you for your mercy. For only your goodness and your mercy has brought us this far. And let the blood of Jesus be upon us. Now, dear Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, dear Lord. We ask that you will bless the speaker of the hour, that she will bring forth the message that you have given her. That it will pierce our heart, pierce our souls. That it will be a message from you that we will be able to take and share with others. Prepare us all to be disciples in your way and in your will. And let us yield to your way and your will. These are many blessings we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. selection from our music ministry followed with the word of God by the Reverend Paula Mellon Lester.
a sight on such a beautiful day. But it was wonderful when he woke us up, as my sister said, when there was liquid sunshine. I don't know about you, but it's just wonderful when God wakes us up because it's another opportunity to do what he has purposed for us to do as long as we're here on this side of the Jordan. Now, I may be the only one who's grateful that no matter what life circumstances have occurred, that we can say our soul is anchored in the Lord. No matter what may happen, we're able to still have joy. And there's somebody that can say they thought that a situation was impossible. They thought that nothing was going to be able to change, but God had another thing that they didn't even know about, and now they see that God indeed is able. We always have a reason to praise him. And this might seem like such a small thing, but it was something about seeing the appearance or the reappearance of something as simple as a bulletin that we saw on Communion Sunday. It was something almost like the Lord saying, I'm bringing you back. And I'm bringing you back, and it's going to be even greater than it was when there was an interruption. Yeah, there is a word from the Lord, but so many things have happened this week. So many things have just occurred that every now and then, you just want to say, thank you, Jesus. Every now and then, you just want to say, hallelujah. Every now and then, you just want to say, Lord, I don't want another thing from you. I'm grateful for what you've done already. Yes. Yes, hallelujah for what God has done. He's an awesome God. And yes, we are continuing in the sermon series on the fruit of the Spirit. We are continuing out of Galatians, the fifth chapter. I am reading from, or will be reading from the King James Version. And yes, I do greet you in the matchless name of the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to start reading at verse 16 and conclude with verse 23. And it reads, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, <coughs> drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Again, the key verses here, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And the tag for the sermon series is what's in your basket? What's in your basket? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, coming to you again, it is now <laughs> preaching time, Lord, and I do add this petition to the prayers that already have been offered. I thank you in advance, Father, that the word that you have supplied will be delivered as you have ordained it to be. I thank you, Father, in advance that only what you want me to say will be said. I thank you, Father, in advance for opening up the minds of those that are assembled under the sound of my voice so that they can understand the word. 
Thank you for opening up the ears so that they can hear the word. Thank you for touching hearts to receive your word. And thank you, as always, for continuing to strengthen our faith muscles so that we can go ahead and obey your word. Yes, Lord, we do continue to lift up those who are grieving. We do lift up those, Father, that have lost so much in the hurricane and, and even in the storms that are forming now. We thank you in advance for protection. We lift up this country, Lord, even right now because we know that so much is going on and so many little chess games are going on but we thank you that we can rest in you we know father that you've got it all under control and we are so grateful and now i ask lord that you have me behind the cross thank you father for your awesome word thanking you in advance for all that you are about to do this prayer is offered in the only name that matters the name of Jesus, who was the one and only Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. What's in your basket? Now, we've gone through, we know that there are nine fruit of the Spirit. We know that they're broken into three different sections. We went through the first section, which was love, joy, and peace. And if the Holy Spirit says so, we will go through the second, what is known as the second triad. And that's what we're focused in today. And that's when we're going to be focusing on the second of the triads. And that is when we're talking about gentleness, goodness, and the long-suffering, which begins it. Now, long-suffering is something that is very interesting. You can see some married couples and the husband will say, oh, I know what long-suffering is. You want to meet my wife. Then you can talk to the wife who'll say, oh, I know what long-suffering is because my husband looks at a piece of furniture and looks at it as a coat hanger. So I know what long-suffering is. But they may know what it means to be annoyed, but they don't know long-suffering. You see, long-suffering, and when you look at the, the Greek word of that, is macrosomia, and that actually means patience. It's divine patience. That, that word actually has the root in it from macros and then thymos, which is, macros is passion or anger. Thymos is uh, how about long. It's, it's um, the, um, let's see, yeah, yeah, I guess that's the best way to do it. I got to invert it. Macros is long and thymos is passion and anger. So what it basically is saying is it's long-tempered. Now, linguists will tell you the English language does not have a counterpart for being short-tempered, but if it did, it would be long-tempered or long-suffering. You see, when you are talking about long-suffering, you're talking about the ability to not give retribution. And that's got to be a gift from yeah. the Spirit. And it's something that when you're looking at that particular fruit, uh, maybe everybody in here is uh, somebody that has never gotten angry. Maybe nobody in here has never felt dissed. Maybe nobody in here has ever felt dismissed. No, maybe nobody in here has ever had uh, felt some kind of way because somebody said something to you that you didn't like. Maybe nobody's had that issue. I know I have. And I can tell you something that I've learned about the fruit of the Spirit with long suffering. You have more peace when you study to stay quiet in the midst of being upset. You see, it's something about human nature that when somebody pushes us, we want to push back. I've heard parents tell our, you know, tell the children, don't you let anybody cheat you any old way. If they do this, you say that. If they push you, you push back. You, I understand wanting your child to be equipped, but that's not godly advice. Because what happens when you push back, you only feel good for that moment. And when you really have the Holy Spirit on board, the moment you finish whatever the confrontation was, the Holy Spirit will whisper in your ear, you know that was not right. You know you did not glorify God the way you behave. You know you need to check yourself. And what I've discovered about the fruit of the Spirit is I, for one fleeting moment, I thought I could be some sort of urban horticulturist for one fleeting moment. I, I loved the way the flowers looked, and I remember Miss Hudgens at prayer meeting used to bring in her homegrown tomatoes, and I was like, you know what? I 
can grow that. We've got lots of space in our backyard. What somebody didn't tell me is you just can't go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy some seeds and toss them in the ground and leave it alone. When you do that, what you get is some dried up seeds and you get no tomatoes. So what I realized, and the Holy Spirit helped me see this, is when you look at the fruit of the Spirit, it's almost like having the Home Depot delivered to your home. You can have all the seeds you want, but if you're not cultivating it, those seeds will just stay right there. You cannot eat those seeds. So when we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, that means we actually have to nurture it. We actually have to grow. We can't obtain it on our own. We can't buy it, but the fruit of the Spirit is right there. We have to choose to walk in the way that God wants us to walk. And I'm telling you, that long suffering, that can be a difficult thing for members of the body of Christ. If you look at church hurt, most of it can be rooted in long suffering. Because you get somebody that'll come into the house and they may not carry it the way you want them to and you're not gonna put up with a certain type of behavior. But long suffering says, wait a minute, I went ahead and I checked out God's long suffering. I went ahead and I looked at what the scripture has to say over in 1 Peter. And I know in 3 and 2.20, he talked about the long suffering of God in the days of Noah. I checked out what the word of God has to say. If God can be long suffering with me, how can I be short tempered about somebody else? Come on, bitch. You see, that's what happens when you're looking at the fruit of the spirit. The first thing you have to do is look inwardly. You have to say, am I walking the talk? Am I walking according to the spirit? So that long suffering, first of all, make sure that you develop that divine patience. The ability to just lovingly wait out a situation. It's something that uh, wise parents know. I, I will tell you that um, over the years, until I met the man that God had for me, I, I, there were a lot of different guys that I met, and when I would introduce them to my father, he was absolutely letting me know that it was not clicking with him. This was not the guy that he was even wanting in his house, let alone married to his daughter. But my mom had wisdom, and she told me about this later. She said she would talk to daddy and say, you know, if you tell her that this is not the one, she's going to hang with him longer just because you said it's not the one. So go ahead and act like you'll put up with it. Go ahead and act like everything's okay. She'll tire of him soon enough. And what does that mean? The hermeneutical, the hermeneutical application is if you see something that is bothering you, it is annoying you, wait it out, pray about it, wait on the Lord and watch him change it. There is no doubt in my mind because I've seen it. When you wait on the Lord, it's going to be better than anything you could have imagined. Then we look at gentleness. Now that gentleness is interesting because gentleness and goodness are very closely related. That gentleness has also been known as kindness. But gentleness is something that is rooted in action. It's rooted in generosity. And when you look at the Greek word for gentleness, that Christades, you will find that it means excellence and up rightness. It is a quality, a characteristic of God. Now, I know we talk about a lot of things being uh, gentle. When you look at fabric softener commercials, this is so gentle. You look at how somebody might treat a little baby. Oh, they're just treating them so gentle. But that's not the gentleness that the word is talking about here. Here it's talking about being able to supply what is useful. Being able to furnish what is productive, being able to meet a need according to God's timing and in God's way. I love it that Minister Chance um, did a class once on the fruit of the spirit, and he gave an example, which was excellent, about this gentleness. Y'all remember the parable of the Good Samaritan? Remember when everybody stepped over the brother that was messed up? You had church members stepping over him. You had the deacons and deaconesses stepping over him. The preacher stepped over him. The pastor stepped over him. But the sworn enemy 
of this injured man was the one who stopped. And if it were today, young people, he would have picked up his cell phone, he'd have dialed 911, he'd have said, I need to have this taken care of. When the paramedics showed up, they would have taken care of the brother, and then he would have put him in the Uber, they would have gone over to the Holiday Inn Express, he would have whipped out his credit card and said, I'm taking care of this situation. If it turns out that more is needed, just put it on the card. You see, he had it like that and he did what was needed because this was the situation. When we show gentleness, that's exactly what we do. In the Word of God, you find examples where gentleness is described as God's benevolence, God's giving the uh, Jesus the salvation to us. That, that is shown as God's kindness to us, his gentleness to us. Again, when we look at the fruit of the Spirit, there's no way in the house of the living God that we should ever be at each other's throats on any situation because walking in the Spirit means that when something comes up that we don't agree with, we're able to tap into that gentleness. We're able to tap into it and hold our tongues. We're able to turn around and say, you know what, we can work this this thing out as God would have us to do it. I, I tell you and forgive the personal references, but I've discovered gentleness in my home. You see, I'm one of these people that like to talk if you haven't figured that out. And I also like to argue out a situation. If there's something going on, I want to keep discussing it until we reach an agreement. But my husband taught me what gentleness is about. Because he's like, you cannot get into an argument if you don't have two people discussing it. So he's like, if you want to go ahead and discuss this, I'm going to be in the other room. I'm going to be downstairs. I'm going to be wherever you are not because I'm not going to discuss this at this point. And what you learn is that is wisdom. Why do you want to go ahead and keep going back and forth when you can just give it to the Lord and in his time, he will touch the respective hearts and say, now it's time for you to get together. Conversely, brothers, if you date a sister, and she is not showing any signs of this godly gentleness. I don't care how fine she is. I don't care all the qualifications that you think you need. You need to leave that sister alone. Because nothing is worse than being in a house with a woman who is not happy. There's nothing worse than being in a house with a woman with street feet. You know, the ones that can't wait to get married, but when they're married, it's like, well, maybe I can't be at home tonight because me and the girls are going this place and that place. It's like, wait a minute, didn't you say you wanted to be married? Well, yeah, but I'm married now. I got my ring now. We're going over to the club. Mm -mm. Watch what you're doing. Make sure you got that gentleness on board because when you get married, if you don't have that going on from the start, you're not going to be able to do a do-it-yourself project. Either it's there and it can be cultivated or it's not. And then we get to goodness. I love goodness. Goodness is complicated. It actually means to do good. Kind of complicated, isn't it? That goodness, that, that, that goodness is actually a definite, not only is it a characteristic of God, that goodness, the, the, um, the biblical scholars will tell you, that word is not found in any of the secular Greek documents. That means that goodness, as it is here, is limited to the spiritual realm. That means that that goodness is only relating to God. So when you look at goodness and you look at how all of the second triad works, it simply means this is how we are to treat one another. At the end of the day, that long-suffering, that gentleness, that goodness is all wrapped up in our relationships to one another. And if we walk according to the Spirit, and if when we treat one another, we are treating each other with the second triad, guess what? It is reflective of growth and our relationship with the Holy Spirit, and equally as important, the outside world will see. When they see you on the job, and they know you got a coworker who's always ready to take credit, even when they didn't do a lick of work, but you know they didn't work, and you just keep on doing 
everything is unto the Lord, you will find that that co-worker eventually gets exposed and you are the one, you never tried to get any glory, you just did your work, but you then get elevated in doing what you're supposed to do and that co-worker, they finally figure out, oh, that, they were just doing the okie doke They were just looking busy. Maybe y'all never had anybody on a job like that. I've seen people like that. They've got piles of paper up on their desk, the computer thing is always on, they always look like they're busy, not doing a lick of work, but they are perpetrating. But the moment that you go ahead and you say, I'm not gonna be worried about what they are or are not doing, I'm gonna stay focused on what God has told me to do, why he has me here in this position, in this place, God will get the glory and you will know that everything is gonna be all right. All we have to do is walk in the spirit. And you say, well, Reverend Dr. Paula, that's kind of tough. You, you, you asking me to do stuff that's hard. I'm not asking you to do a thing. The Word of God is saying it. And I'm here to tell you, if you want to know that you're really growing in the Lord, check your walk. If you really want to know how close you are to really pleasing the Holy Spirit, see how you react in different situations. And I tell you what, if you ever found yourself a few months ago, a year ago, two years ago, if you ever acted one way and something similar comes up and your reaction is completely different in a good way, then you know that you are working to walk in the Spirit. You are yielding to the power of the Holy Spirit. And I can guarantee you when you do that, it's a wonderful feeling. Yeah. When you do that, you can sleep soundly at night. When you do that, you can look yourself in the mirror and know that you've done everything you yeah. could do in a situation and you didn't step out of the way God wants you to do. There's something about walking in the spirit, and I've said this before, when you walk in the spirit, you find that things that normally would bother you to the point of needing some kind of medication, you find you don't need it. You find your blood pressure is now more regulated. You find your heartbeat is now more regulated. If you had stress headaches, you find that you have them less frequently because everything that comes up, you're taking it to the Lord in prayer and you're saying, Father, go ahead and handle this thing. I want to walk the way you want me to walk. I want to be the way you want me to be. I want to handle situations the way you want me to handle situations. And you know what? The moment you start doing that, when the devil starts attacking. Let me tell you something. He won't necessarily come at you anymore because he's already seen I'm wasting my time when I mess with you. Let me go attack a friend of yours. Let me go attack a family member. But when you understand what the devil is up to, you will say, I'm walking in the spirit. I'm not giving in to your mess. I'm showing long suffering. I'm showing gentleness. I'm walking in goodness. Go ahead and watch her. I know those of us who saved, we know this. But you cannot walk in the Spirit if you don't have the Holy Spirit on board. I don't care how many good things you do. If the good thing you do is not rooted in love, if the good thing you do does not have God at the source, all you're doing is doing good, but it's not the same thing. You know how we are in this world today. You can go online, you can pick up the paper, you can turn on the radio. There is violence all around us. It's not only in the neighborhood, it's in the city, it's in the states, it's in the world. You've got all these people talking about World War III, not World War III. I want our young people to fully understand. It doesn't matter what world power say you're going to do. God is the one that knows when time will end. But we don't know when our time on this earth will end. And it's so comforting 
when somebody you love is called home, to know that they are now in heaven for eternity. It's comforting when you know that hell was no longer their destination. God doesn't want anybody in hell. He didn't build hell for us. He built hell for Satan and the rebellious angels. But if we insist upon going, he won't allow us to go. But is there anybody under the sound of my voice, anybody in the house, who does not want hell as their final destination? Anyone in the house who wants to give God your heart and know that you have the right to eat of the tree of life, to know that eternity with God is yours. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Well, let us praise God for salvation. And since you're resting on your feet, let us prepare to leave this service. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. We pray, Lord, that you are pleased with everything that happened in this service today. From the time of the call to worship until the benediction. Father, we ask right now your divine protection. Physically, because we know you protected us spiritually. But your divine protection among everybody in this sanctuary on the on the teleconference line, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Father, please protect. Send your holy angels to surround every vehicle, whether it is a personal vehicle, whether it is metro, whatever the situation is, keep your holy angels around us. Father, we ask right now that those that are returning home, if there was a situation that was not good and they left to come here for service, we ask that the situation already has been taken care of, that when they step foot in their house, they are stepping foot in a changed situation, and they know that it's only because of your goodness, only because of your kindness. And Father, as we leave this place, grateful that we're never dismissed from your presence because of the awesome indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It is now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present you falling before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Be glorified.